You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production. The Brock and Dolby Podcast. This is the Brock and Dolby Podcast. Hello, motherfuckers. What's up? <laughs> Are we allowed to start it like that? I don't I don't see why not, right? It's a holiday Monday. It's I a- never know what I can say and I can't say on this podcast because I'm so used to being on the radio. Well, that's just it. We've both had like multi-year radio careers where it's always been beaten into you. Don't swear. Don't say this. Don't do anything inappropriate. And then they're like, now you can have a podcast. And I think your first question was, how much can we swear? <laughs> and they were like, a reasonable amount. Yeah. And no one has yelled at us yet. Yeah. And we're 44 episodes deep. Or I've like never actually sworn on the radio before, but my dad has. Really? Yeah. I brought my dad on to my show when I worked in Prince Albert. And I can't remember what they had like in Prince Albert. They had like these weird double negatives that they would say. Mm. Like they'd be like, poor deadly truck you got there, which meant like ni- oh, nice truck. Okay. So I was doing all this like. Prince Albert slang versus Newfie slang with my dad. Mm. And I asked him exactly that. Like, what do you think that means? And my dad was like, you got a piece of shit truck. And I was like, <laughs> <"Dad!"> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, and so young in the industry, too, to just be like terrified. Like, this is it. Oh, like, yeah. I was like 20 years old. I was freaking out. <laughs> my man. dad just tanked my radio. Oh, career. my dad felt so bad after. But uh, I swore on the radio once, but it was almost you almost couldn't hear it. Um, it was when I was in Regina and I finished talking and I turned on a song. And I leaned away from the microphone without turning it off because someone was coming in and it was somebody from the sales department of that radio station who wanted to talk about how fucking bad the Rough Riders had played the night yeah. before. And we're just sitting there like, oh, are you fucking kidding? And They're then you so realize there was no music playing in the studio. And it was just like he goes wide eyed as he looks and he sees the red light oh, on the God. board. and. We we pulled all the audio. We listened back to it meticulously, and it's like I can tell we're talking. I can't tell what we're saying. I think we're gonna be okay. <laughs> That's everyone's nightmare, man. Um, but uh, today on the podcast, uh, I mean, well, uh, let's let's swear some more. Yeah. Fuck. Fucking <laughs> shit. I don't know. I just felt like getting it out Probably of the way. Get in trouble for that. Um, <laughs> We're doing a game of uh, no bad questions. We've been asking you guys both on the radio and on social media for your questions that you've had for us. And we're just going to run through and answer a bunch of them here on a holiday Monday so that our bosses can get off our backs about going on vacation and not giving you fresh podcasts every day. Yeah, thanks to everyone who hit us up on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff for all these questions here. So, uh, I mean, you got the list. I got some questions here. Uh, Let's start with this one from Kevin. Wants to know, what would be a bad song if you were running an election campaign? Uh, First one that comes to my head, and maybe it's just because we were playing it as a joke during the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs run against Boston. Mm -hmm. What's that Chris Daughtry song? It's it's all over? It's not over. It's not over. That's it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. I mean, uh, there's so many that you could go with. Uh, I mean, any sort of, like, metal song that's got like dark kind of undertones would probably be up there blood yeah and and deeper cuts than that painting blood angel of death maybe yeah 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 to come out to the ah! i asked this question because a lot of people think that one of the reasons and i'm trying to be political but that justin trudeau got elected was the whole i'll legalize marijuana how does a politician do in 2024 if they come out and their walkout song is Smoke Two Joints by Sublime? <laughs> <laughs> does Dude. that win voters or lose voters? Speaking of Sublime songs, if your election song was Date Rape... <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know how you go about that. Well, one. I mean, it might be the first politician to admit to fucking over the voters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, worst. Uh, worst uh, election song that you could use is a mortal technique dance with the devil. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> you that don't song. know that is song. That a rough one. <laughs> it's an eight minute rap song about uh, gang activities <laughs> that are. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there's. Yeah. Yeah. You're a little older than me. There's a certain age range of people that in elementary school, someone's uh. older brother was like. Have you ever heard Dance with the Devil before? <laughs> I, I, if you're listening to this podcast, pause it down, listen to that song, be grossed out with yourself, and come back and be mad at me for telling you to listen to that song. I'll find a link and I'll put it in the show notes if you're listening on Spotify. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. check that out. Uh, let's move on to another question. Uh, Eric wants to know, and we get this one a lot, why do you guys look nothing like your logo for the show? Uh, I mean, I don't have my bleached blonde hair anymore. Yeah, you kind of had like puffier bleached hair. And you don't have hair. Yeah, so (laughs) we paid an artist, like not even the company, we paid for it ourselves. 500 bucks. Shout out Kid Pixel. 
Uh, and then immediately after we got this really cool logo made, I got fatter, so I didn't have the jawline. I shaved my head, so I didn't have the hairline. And I got LASIK, so I didn't have the glasses. I'm going to say something, and I don't want you to get mad at me. I, I mean, listen, everything you've ever said to me, we're pretty much past that. All right. I have never seen that hair on your head. The hair, no, that's probably fair. The hair would, that is in our logo, I've never seen that hair. You would before. have to go to my early twenties, yeah. which is more than fifteen years ago, yeah. to find me with that hair. Like. That the my logo, that's what I look like in twenty twenty. Yeah, yours is maybe like two thousand and seven. Well, if you're gonna pay an artist to draw your <laughs> sure, face, sure, you sure. don't want them to. Uh, oh, what is he just gonna do? <laughs> Shrek box art? Like, well, that's not. <laughs> It's not going to sell the show. Honestly, Shrek would have been a little more accurate, but I'm trying to be nice here. I'm trying to be nice. So, yeah, I, the reason we don't look it is because we had a very polite artist who made me look better than normal, and Brock just got a little older. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah, it. yeah. Uh, Rod wants to know, for some reason, if we walk to work. Maybe this is related to the story about how you got pulled over biking to work. Yeah, day. for anyone who doesn't know, I was trying to be healthy a couple of years ago and bike to work and just bike <laughs> everywhere. Um, um, and I got pulled over. Like, I was riding my bike. It was 4.30 in the morning. And yeah. uh, I got the boop, boop. And God was like, what are you doing? It's like, going to work? Oh, yeah? <laughs> so where do you work? It's like, the radio station? Just over here? No big deal. He didn't believe me. No. And they ID'd me and everything. And then he was like, oh, okay, all right. Well, I think you did have bleached hair at the time. And you always roll with, like, the, the, the board shorts and stuff in the yeah, summertime. Yeah. I had my browser shirt on. You which were probably sketchy, didn't help. you know? Like, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I get it. Do we walk to work, though? No. I think, uh, I, honestly, since that incident, I yeah. I said, screw the exercise. In yeah. the I mean, I go to the gym, but, like, that's it. I live too far to walk, but uh, when we first started doing this show, I lived what probably would have been, what, a five-minute walk to my old place? Mm -hmm. And um, I still did not walk, so yeah, oh, that's I, not my style. I don't know, man. It's an ungodly hour to be up, and anyone yeah. who's up and walking at this time is probably up to no good. I don't mean to be rude, but <laughs> just calling the spade a spade, you know? Uh, Carrie wants to know, is there a song that you think best describes your co-host? Hmm. Got to think about that one for a second here. A song that would describe you very well. I feel like the first one that comes to my head, maybe it's because I know you and I know they're mm. your favorite band, but I, I always think of What's My Age Again. What's My Age Again? such a young fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I know you're a big Tool guy, so anytime I hear Tool, mm. I think of you. Yeah. And sometimes when I'm mad at you, I'm like, what a Tool. What you describe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So maybe I'll just have to go with any Tool song. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, Chris, a hard-hitting question here. This is, this is going to tug at your brain a little bit. If a chicken patty is on a bun, like a chicken burger, yeah. is it a burger or is it a chicken sandwich? Does the bun change what it is? Mm, I mean, technically, it's just, I mean, technically, they're all sandwiches, regardless, right? Like two pieces, of, so something between two pieces of bread is a sandwich. Like a hot dog. Yeah. Uh, Sure. We, we if you, if you want to get into that, we, we'll get into that later. But I mean, technically, a hamburger is a sandwich as well. I suppose so. I think if anybody ever was like, "Hey, do you want to come over for a barbecue this weekend?" I'm making beef sandwiches. I would be like, "I'm not. You're not letting you cook for me." I feel like what makes it a chicken burger mm. is if it's round. If it doesn't look uh, organic, yeah, 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 you know what I mean. Right. Like if you can tell that it's just come out of some frozen box, then that's a chicken burger. That makes it a chicken burger. Whereas if it's got like the breast shape. If it's got like little offshoot points, yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes it a chicken sandwich. Yeah, like if it looks like a chicken titty, then it's it's a, it's a chicken sandwich, you know? <laughs> okay. Uh, this one says, uh, oh, this is actually good. When we started doing the Brock and Dolby show here in Ontario, the reception was, let's say, lukewarm. I don't remember any of that. Really? I, I, I thought it was a hot start, to be honest with you. Is that what your therapist suggested? Most definitely didn't have angry people messaging us. We most definitely didn't have a petition of almost 3,000 people within three days trying to get us off the radio. I don't remember any of that. Billy commented, and apparently Billy was one of those people. He says, how did you guys handle it when dicks like me were hating you guys before you even started the show? Did you just brush it off, or was it getting to you? Uh, I mean, obviously, it, it gets yeah. to you. I mean, that's that old thing. Like, uh, tons of people are always like, oh, I don't read the comments. I don't read the... Of course you do. Absolutely. Like, you uh, do. we wouldn't be in this job if we weren't a little bit, like, narcissists, right? Yeah, and I mean, I've been doing this for about 20 years now, so, like, small comments don't get to me the way they used to. 
I, if we get like a one-off text in a show, I'll usually just be like, ah, fuck this. See, guy. I disagree. Actually, I'm the opposite. Where it's like people can say nice things about the show or mm. myself or you or whatever all the time. That doesn't matter to you. And it's it's nice. Yeah, oh sure. It's nice. Yeah, that's not what I meant. <laughs> but then one person can be like, I hate the sound of your nasally voice, which is mm. something someone said to me recently. Oh, geez, Dolby. And it sticks with you. <laughs> it's like uh, people can say the nicest stuff to you, but like one thing, yeah. and I'll focus on that one thing forever. I can usually put off a one-off if it's a big crowd. Like we had so many people mm. that without even hearing us, we're just like... Like, I hope you guys die. Like, yeah. That bothered me. I will say a one-off can still bother me if it's a stupid complaint. Mm. And I know that sounds like maybe a little egotistical, but if someone says something and like the insult or the complaint is just really dumb or unfounded, that's when you'll see you see me when I go, oh, fuck this guy, man. <laughs> Jesus. Well, it, it's like Tom Brady. He's the greatest quarterback of all time, but everyone always makes fun of how he runs. You know that bugs the hell out of him. <laughs> Right, yeah, you you could see it if you watch the roast of Tom Brady. Yeah. He did not care for those jokes. <laughs> uh, and then we've got Jonathan, and I think this will be good. We'll do more of these, but we'll wrap it up with uh, this one from Jonathan. Wants to know, and I'll let you go first. The best place you've ever lived, and the worst place you've ever lived. Uh, the best place I've ever lived. I'm really digging here in Kingston right now. Yeah. Honestly. Um, me and Courtney are very happy here. Right. Uh, we're having a good time. Uh, so I'd probably say, actually, yeah, this is probably the best place so far. It's oh. beautiful out here. Okay. I think this is the new cottage country, too, with everyone moving out. True. Um, I, I'm really happy to be here, minus how fucking expensive it is. That is that's, definitely a thing. That's the only thing. Got a good group of friends and stuff here. Uh, concerts coming through is always awesome. Uh, worst place I've ever lived, St. Paul, Alberta, though. St. Paul. I don't even. I lived in Alberta for a lot of years. I don't have a fucking clue where St. Paul is. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's like between <laughs> Bonneville and like Lac La It's like, pretty rough when to give an idea of where a small town is, you have to list two slightly less small towns. Which, to anyone who doesn't know Alberta, <laughs> yeah. it's like way northeast of Edmonton somewhere. Somebody who's born and raised in Ontario going, what the hell's a Lac La If you've driven through the prairies, you know they have all that like. Uh, that nonsense when it was like the uh, centennial anniversary where every every town had to put up like a, a staple or oh, a roadside yeah, attraction. Yeah, yeah. St. Paul's is the first ever UFO landing pad. <laughs> Not that a UFO has ever landed there. Or no, but like it's that. a landing pad. If but they ever decide, they could land there. That was the big selling feature. I uh, I lived there for three months. It was mm. one of my first radio jobs. Worked with a dude. We both absolutely like despised each other. Yeah. Uh, it was one of those things where every morning you like get up and you'd be like, "What the fuck am I doing?" <laughs> I went to the bar because like I like to think I'm a pretty social guy. So I was sure. like, oh, "I need to make some friends." I went to the bar and it was legit like all dudes in cowboy hats oh. and stuff. And some dude came up to me. I was wearing my misfit shirt. And he's like, what are you doing here? And I was like, what? He's like, you don't belong here. And I was like, what movie am I in right now? And he was like, you should get out of here. And I like finished my beer and I was like, screw this. I literally was there for three months. I think I got my probation and then yeah. I got a new job. And gotta I get out of here. Got the hell out of Dodge. And uh, I could go, I could do a whole podcast about the guy Jesus. I worked with. Oh, God. I've heard the stories. You probably shouldn't. No, I probably shouldn't. But if you ever see this man out of the bar, just say the word toast and just go from there. Oh, my You'll have God. A great oh, my God. I, yeah, I, yeah, I need to stop myself. But yeah. I'll, I'll stop you by taking over. I would say the best place I ever lived, and I never thought I would say this because I grew up in small towns and I fucking hated it. But uh, Smithers, British Columbia, which is like between Prince Rupert and uh, Prince George. Yeah, yeah. Is just God's country, man. Like, it's just the sights out there are so beautiful. I was close to San Terrace because yeah. I lived a few hours away from where you lived. It's gorgeous out there, it's man. It's so pretty and, like, just good down-home people and stuff like that. Like, I've often said it's somewhere I could see myself moving back to when my kids are off doing their own thing. And it's a little remote. It's a little isolated. But if I'm just, like, an old-ass man. A tad racist, too. Maybe some people, a little bit of some people. I sure. spent some time there. There's some interesting folks, to say the least. Most people are good people. I loved it there. I could easily see myself going back there. Uh, I would say the worst place I ever lived, and uh, I don't know if there's anybody from back home that listens to this podcast. 
Hay River in the Northwest Territories, man. I don't it's think they have internet so there yet, so you're fine, dude. I moved there for grade six. It was super clicky. I got beat up all the time, bullied for being the new kid, all this stuff. There's still people that are like, oh, we're super cool. We're going to grow up and be the best. We're going to do so much stuff. They're still fucking living in the same place down the street from their parents and all this shit. And it's just like... People ask, like, oh, man, how often do you get back to the territories? And the answer is zero times since the last time the government paid for it when I was in college. Yeah. I, I got no reason to go back. You I got no hometown it. love, eh? I got no hometown love, brother. I moved too many times, though. This is, like, the 13th place so I've So have been. I, but I still love Milton, dude. Yeah. I still love Milton. You got to take me to Milton one of these days. Show me around. Show I, me the sights. <laughs> like, the weird thing is, is, like, I love where I'm from, but, like, I took Courtney there one time, and she was like, okay. <laughs> like, she's like, okay, it's just it's just a town. Like, I, I think it's, like, I like certain... I, I, Certain things that yeah. uh, trigger nostalgia, I guess, is Maybe. the biggest thing. But like, if you like the outdoors, if you like wilderness, if you like that sort of thing, I will say, go to the territories in the summer. It's friggin' cool up. There, if man. you have ten thousand dollars to spend on flights, <laughs> yes, exactly. go to the Northwest Territories. Other than that, man, you don't need to be there in the winter time. Period. You don't need to be mixing, and mingling. Just it's good. So if if for some reason uh, you ever get like super famous, yeah, yeah, you don't think they'll put up a sign. Uh, in your hometown for you? I would be surprised if anybody even knows I'm from there, other than, like, people who've talked to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think, like, even now as a vaguely successful radio host, I don't think there's anybody in Hay River going, like, who are the most favorite, famous Hay Riverites? Hay Riverians? Hay Riverians. There's nobody talking about me from there. There's no sign going up, and to be honest... That's fine. That's <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> I'd be stoked I, if I had one in Milton because, yeah. I mean, there's too many people to even know who the hell I am. Right. But uh, I, I would at least love to have, like, something hung up in my high school. Mm. Uh, I think that would be cool because I remember there was, like, some <laughs> fucking no-name pitcher when, I, when we were in gym class. I can't even remember. See, that's the thing. I don't even remember the guy's name. Sure. But he had a, a banner, like, in our gymnasium and right. stuff. Like, the thing is, though, he's an athlete. Like, whether he's a big-name athlete or mm. whatever, he went on to have an athletic career, so it makes sense to put a banner up in the gym. If they're going to put up a Brock Lewis banner at the, what's the name of the Milton's school? Milton High School. Uh, sorry, I did not go to Milton District. Oh, uh, correction. Shit. I went to Bishop Reading, all right? All I'm saying is it's more likely to be the Brock Lewis Memorial Smoke Pit than anything else. That'd be <laughs> sick. <laughs> That'd actually be so cool, dude. High school? Yeah. That'd be, yo, if I die, I swear to God, I don't know if there's any any of my buddies from Milton are listening. I don't know if anyone from Milton has any attachments to the high school there. But if I die, yeah, dude, fucking turn me into the smoke pit. Brother, bro. I'll spearhead that movement for you. I'll, I'll just, like, have a hand out. You can <laughs> rest a smoke in there. Go and go and put a Pall Mall smooth in my hands from time to time. Flick your, your thumb and it's a lighter. Yeah. <laughs> in case anyone needs a lighter. Absolutely. There was a forest down the street that was the sesh spot. Maybe that could be an undisclosed like yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, That's on the mystery tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, dude, that would actually be so sick where it's like you could put some sort of, like, flint or something there. Yeah. That way you could always get a lighter. Oh, You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, It's my thumb. It's just a thumbs up. The spark of Milton, Brock Lewis. Yes. Yeah. As long as you have, like, a stick or something. There you go. Yeah. Thank you for all your questions. Remember, there are no bad questions, but there are plenty of bad answers. Uh, and if you're ever in Hay River, uh, ask anyone if they know Dolby. God, if you find out they do, please let me know. I'll be shocked. Dude, I'm doing some Facebook in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get some stories. For more Brock and Dolby, tune in weekday mornings 5.30 to 9. The Brock and Dolby podcast is brought to you by BadShop.ca, the Brock and Dolby merch store. With all proceeds going to the Canadian Cancer Society.